Let's take a look at some of the major muscles of the body. Now up here at the top, we start with the sternocleidomastoid. First of all, notice in this picture how the muscles over here are from a front anterior view. And here we got a rear posterior view off to the side. But looking from the front, these muscles you see in the neck, left and right side, big, long, thin muscles are the sternocleidomastoid. They're involved with rotating your head, like when you say no, and also flexing it, like when you tilt your head forward. There's the large trapezius muscles. You can see those better from the back, rear, posterior view right there that people commonly call their traps. That's sort of at the very top in between your shoulder and neck. Talk about moving your scapula. Those are big, powerful muscles there. Here's the deltoid muscle right up there at the very top of your shoulder. If you want to elevate your hand, if you want to bring it up, you tell those deltoid muscles to contract. They're elevating your humerus to accomplish that movement. The pectoralis major muscle. Now these are found in the pectoral chest region. Major tells you they're large. And if you look at their origin and insertion, remember origin's the more stationary end. Largely what that is is the sternum. Then they insert over here on the humerus. <clears throat> so if you think about muscles only getting shorter, what that muscle's going to do, <clears throat> excuse me, is take your humerus and pull it closer to your sternum. So think about when you do something like a push-up. That's exactly what you're doing. You're taking that humerus bone and pulling it forward. Those are powerful muscles which accomplish that movement there. The serratus anterior found kind of high up on your ribs. The external obliques are sort of to your sides. You put your hands on your sides. That's where you'll find those. The rectus abdominal muscles, your good old abs as you commonly call them. And you'll see these muscles originate down here on your pelvis and then they insert on your inferior ribs and the xiphoid process, which is the bottom of your sternum. <clears throat> now, most people know you use these ab muscles when you do something like a sit up. Well, what you're doing when you do a sit-up, you're taking your chest, think about that sternum and those ribs, and pulling them down closer to your pelvis. And that's what gives you that sit-up action there. The biceps brachii, big muscle right up here in this brachial region to the front. It's got two heads or origins where it's get by in the sep's name right there. Here's your brachial radialis, big large muscle down here in your forearm that's found laterally. And here's a few others, like the flexor carpi radialis and palmaris longus. These are some of the flexors in your forearm. Now, remember the anatomic position. Your palms are forward. So all of these muscles in your forearm that are on the front, anterior, are what's called the flexors of your hand and wrist. So when you think about bending your wrist or bending your fingers when you grab something, those are all the muscles you use. There's a lot of little flexors there. That's just a few of them listed. Here you can see a bit of the gluteus medius muscle. Most of that's posterior to the back. That's the muscle we often get shots in. This muscle here that's up high doesn't have any nerves deep to it. That's why that's a safe spot to get a shot. Here's the pectineus, one of those muscles that's to the inside of the thigh, one of those adductors. Remember, that's the action when you move closer to the midline. So when you're bringing your feet together, that's just one of the muscles used there. Here's the long, thin sartorius, the longest muscle in the human body there. And then we get down into these quadriceps femoris muscle group. Now, what people commonly call their quads are these four big muscles on the front of their thigh. Whenever you stand up, you walk or run or whatever, that's really when you use those muscles. So there's four of them. Now, notice how three of them have vastus in their name. Well, there's a vastus medialis, that's medial to the inside vastus lateralis to the outside, and there's a vastus intermedius in between the two. But you can't see the vastus intermedius from this view because the last one, the rectus femoris, lies right on top of it. So you can see the vastus lateralis, medialis, and rectus femoris. And if you removed that rectus femoris, that vastus intermedius be deep to it. A little bit lower, you got the tibialis anterior name because it's along your tibia and anterior to the front along your shin. What you think of your calf muscle is actually two muscles, the very large gastrocnemius and then a little bit deeper and a little bit more distal is the soleus. 
Here you can see the posterior rear view of the gastrocnemius and a couple of these muscles down there alongside of them. Back up here, again, is that vastus lateralis to the outside. And remember, to the back of your thigh, you got this biceps femoris, right? That's on the back. Don't confuse that with the biceps brachii that's in the brachial region. This is in the femoral region. So here's the semimembranosus. It's back here to the rear part of your thigh region also. The gracilis, it's a very thin muscle to the very inside of your thighs there. If you ever maybe do the splits on accident and feel something pull inside your lower limbs, it's probably that gracilis muscle. There's the very large gluteus maximus, which you sit on right there. And then here are the extensors in your uh, forearm found on the back posterior side. Again, if you got your palm forward, flexors to the front, extensors to the back. And again, where the flexors bend your wrist and bend your fingers, the extensors do exactly the opposite. Straighten your wrist back out and straighten your fingers back out. So there are several of those extensors listed here. Here's the latissimus dorsi to the back, what people commonly call their lats. This will take your humerus and pull it to the back in a posterior direction where that pectoralis major pulls that humerus to the front. So there again is the gluteus medius. We saw that before. Here's that triceps brachii. Again, that biceps brachii is to the front, triceps brachii to the back. Those are opposing muscles where that biceps brachii flexes or bends at your elbow. The triceps brachii does exactly the opposite, straightens your upper limb back out. And there's the little teres muscles found here to the back, sort of inferior to that deltoid. Again, teres means round. There's somewhat some circular muscles. And there's a big one and a small one, a major and a minor. And we looked at the deltoid before, and also the trapezius, which you see much more to the back. Now let's take some other views of these muscles here too. There's your biceps brachii, right there to the front of that brachial region. There's your deltoid, right up there at the very top of your shoulder pectoralis major, the rectus abdominis, good old ab muscles, the linea alba, so this little depression right down the center in between them, and then the serratus anterior muscles way up high on the superior ribs. There's a much better view of your traps or trapezius muscle, very big muscle. Mostly what they do are actions of the scapula, but notice how there's a tendon comes up to the back of your head. That contracts, that causes you to look upward. So there's your deltoid again. There's your very large latissimus dorsi. When you talk about taking this humerus and pulling it back, like when you do something like a rowing action or a pull-up, those are big, strong muscles being used there. There's your triceps brachii to the backside of that brachial region. Looking at some of the muscles of the face, and something that's a little different about some of these facial muscles is that most all skeletal muscles pull and move bones. But some of these in your face pull on the skin, and that's what gives us these facial expressions. So here's the occipital frontalis, which you sort of think of as your forehead there. There's the orbicularis oculi around your eye, so when you talk about closing your eye, like when there's a bright light in them or something, you use those at that time. The nasalis muscles aren't really shown here, but they're right on top of your nose. When you think about opening your nostrils up, flaring your nostrils, those muscles are used then. There's the orbicularis oris around your mouth. Think of those as like puckering muscles. Again, circular muscles always close an opening. You do something like whistle, you're really using those at that time. Here's a couple of zygomaticus muscles, the minor and major, attached up here to this zygomatic bone. And then over here at the angles of the oral cavity, they'll pull on that skin. If it pulls those angles up and back, those are some smiling muscles. Here's your sternocleidomastoid, you can see on either side of your neck. Again, when you think about saying no, when you turn your head left and right, you really use them then. And if you tilt your head forward, flexing, they're both working at that time. And there you can see the trapezius muscles a bit from this picture too. There's the occipital frontalis again. Here's your big temporalis muscles found over the temporal bone. Those are some strong biting, chewing muscles there. There's that orbicularis oculi around the eye. And then here's three auricularis muscles. Oracle means ear. Those will move your ear. If you want that ear to move forward, you're going to contract the auricularis anterior. If you want it to move to the back, the auricularis posterior. 
and there's a superior which can move it upward. And humans can't do that much, but think about how your dog or your cat moves their ears. They use those muscles a lot more. Here's your masseter muscle, another one of the big, strong, biting, chewing muscles. This runs from that zygomatic arch, this bone across here, down to the body of the mandible. Remember, muscles get shorter. This bone up here is not going to move, but your mandible will definitely elevate. So good biting muscle. There's a great view of the sternocleidomastoid, and again, trapezius to the back right there. And let's look just a minute at those muscles involved with chewing or mastication. Now, the temporalis and the master we looked at, those are your power muscles when you talk about biting down on something. So that gives you a lot of elevation of the mandible. Now, back up under your mandible, which you can't see in any of those views, is the lateral and medial pterygoid. Medial pterygoid also works to elevate the mandible, but the lateral depresses it. And you can also use these muscles together along with those pterygoids to get a side-to-side -side grinding action like when you chew a piece of meat back to the rear on the molars and such. And there's some muscles attached to that hyoid bone work along with them too. If you look at your tongue, that skeletal muscle, you got voluntary control over it, so it must be. And you use that tongue for many things. Speech is one. You move food in between your teeth, especially those back ones, to bite it and chew it and grind it up into smaller pieces. And whenever you want to swallow something, you take your tongue, push that food to the top of your mouth, to the hard palate, push it back into your pharynx, which is your throat. And there's two different muscle groups associated with your tongue. There's a group inside of it, which are more about changing the shape of the tongue, and the extrinsic group, the muscles outside of the tongue, which are more about moving it around. And just a couple of those are the genioglossus and the hypoglossus. Those are just some of those bigger muscles, but notice how they have glossus in the name. That means they're tongue muscles there. We're also going to take a look at the muscles that move your eyes around. Now, there's six different skeletal muscles that do that. There are four rectus muscles. They run in a straight line. And then there's two obliques. Now, the four rectus muscles, look at where they're located. Superior on top, inferior on bottom medial to the inside close to your nose, and then lateral way to the outside away from that nose. These muscles, wherever they're located, move the eye in that direction. So since your superior rectus is above your eye, that turns your gaze upward when you look up. Inferior rectus cause you to look down. Medial rectus moves your eyes towards your nose like when you look cross-eyed or something. And then lateral moves them to the outside, away from the nose. Now, there's also two oblique muscles, one on top and bottom, superior and inferior. And they move your gaze, which way you're looking, in the opposite direction in which they're located. So where the superior rectus has you look up, the superior oblique has you look down. And, of course, the inferior oblique as you look upward. They work opposite of each other. So think about if somebody wants to look up, they're using the superior rectus and at the same time the inferior obliques. And think about if you look to the left. Well, in your left eye, you're contracting the lateral rectus and in the right eye, the medial rectus. That way your eyes go in the same direction right there. And look at here where these muscles are located. Now, something else that's shown in this picture, there's the lacrimal gland. That's your tear glands right there. But we can see these muscles relatively well. Here's a superior rectus up on top. Barely see a little bit of the inferior rectus. Here's the medial rectus, again, closer to your nose. And there's that lateral rectus way to the outside. And then here's your superior oblique on top, inferior oblique just beneath it. It's also mentioned just a little about some of the bones along your vertebral column. You think about what allows you to stand up straight. There's a lot of muscles called the erector spinae muscle group. They get that name because they straighten your spine. And if you look at how these muscles do that, they originate down your vertebrae, right? That's really the non-moving end. And they insert on your ribs. So when you tell these muscles to contract, what you're doing are taking your ribs and pulling them back close to your vertebrae. That's what stands you up straight right there. Some other important muscles are the muscles involved with ventilation. 
Here's your breathing muscles, the ones that move air in and out of your lungs. Very important right here. Well, when you look at the muscles of inspiration and expiration, obviously they're working opposite of each other. It takes one group of muscles to get the air in and a different to get it out. Now, this will be covered a lot more along with other things in the respiratory chapter. But let's just look at these muscles right here. Your diaphragm muscle is the prime mover when it comes to inspiration, getting the air in. You'll see in pictures, this diaphragm muscle is the floor, the bottom of your thoracic cavity. Now, when it's relaxed, it's up high and it's dome shaped. And when you tell it to contract, it goes down and flattens out a bit right there. So you can see this in pictures further along at your main muscle when it comes to getting air in. But look at what can work along with it, right? When you're sitting and resting, that diaphragm muscle is all that you need. But during what's called labored breathing, when you're breathing fast and hard, you're going to use some other muscles along with that diaphragm. And those others are the external intercostals, scalenes, and pectoralis minor. And what those muscles do there are elevate your ribs. They swing them up and out. Look at what happens when you take a deep breath. You can tell that your ribs move upward. It's these muscles that are doing it. <clears throat> when it comes to expiration, getting the air out, usually you don't need much muscle help for this. But when you're breathing really fast, like when you've been running, you can use some other muscles, like the rectus abdominis. You get old ab muscles. These muscles contract. They'll push in on your internal organs and up on that diaphragm muscle, forcing air out. That's why sometimes if you get out and run when you haven't ran in a while, those stomach muscles are sore the next day. And the internal intercostals will pull down on your ribs, just like these above pulled up on your ribs. Now looking at some of the muscles of the abdominal wall, we looked at the rectus abdominis. You get old ab muscles right there. Again, you do something like a sit-up. You're taking your sternum and your inferior ribs and pulling them down closer to your pelvis at that time. There's your obliques and transverse abdominis found more laterally out to the side right there. You can use those a bit during forced expiration, vomiting, defecation, things like that. And we mentioned muscles that move the scapula when we mentioned the trapezius, good old traps, big powerful muscles for moving that scapula. But there are some others that work along with that trapezius like the levator, scapulae, rhomboidus, and serratus anterior. 